Hello, lovely people. How are you? So, hope you all are staying indoors as much as possible, observing all precautions, looking after friends, family, community. And if you're not, do that. These are difficult times, and together as community, we shall prevail. So, welcome to episode ten of Know the Happiness How with Vinko Chow. I'm your host, Wing Commander Satyendra Chauhan, aka Vinko Chow. a resilient lifestyle strategy coach from bangalore india and today we on our show are going to talk to a special guest all the way in the early mornings from jacksonville florida us we welcome dr mary thanks for having me here all right so uh, mary welcome welcome to the show uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, with us this morning and uh, thank you for taking time out to come and uh, talk to us uh, we've been looking forward to this for almost a week 10 days so good to have you here so uh, well uh, my listeners and viewers there she is dr mary and let me give you a little bit of background on mary uh she graduated from pharmacy pharmacy school in 2008 and has experience in retail hospital and insurance company so uh, before we begin mary uh i was you know uh, in the run up to this interview i was trying to find out a little more about you just to get you know a little better so but i couldn't you know <laughs> so my first question to you is uh are you this quiet reserved you know uh so to say mind my own business kind of person or there is another side to you which is you know a uh, little close guarded yeah i think you hit it <laughs> yeah right. usually i usually am perceived as quiet and reserved and focused on my work and then i think everybody when they're not uh-huh. at work or they have another another side <laughs> okay yeah. so so i i i you know uh start uh, with a very very basic question if i may ask you what is your full name <laughs> yes i know you prefer it, to be called mary <laughs> it's mary elizabeth mansfield all right okay mm-hmm. mary elizabeth mansfield yes mm-hmm. i i was trying to look for uh you know initially when i was uh, the day you had forwarded uh, one of your uh you know tapes and recordings i was trying to look for you by the name uh, mary mansfield and then finally i got you as mary elizabeth so i said this will be my opening question to you <laughs> okay so uh as uh, you know mary uh you know happiness how with vinko chow is a show that uh, we air for some meaningful conversations to bring a smile on the faces and you know a uh, kind of cheer to lighten up the moods and yes uh, you know lift the whole spirits of uh, all those uh, people who are facing challenges in their workplaces especially the entrepreneurs professionals and executives so when we say that uh, we would all want to ask you you know what is your happiness quotient what what is my happiness Yeah what is your uh, happiness question how do you derive your happiness or uh, let's let me let me rephrase it you know uh do you get goosebumps <laughs> what I excites so. you what excites you what gets you emotional <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think yeah a few different questions there right in the in the workplace like how to be how to be happy in the challenges that okay. people face uh-huh. and and then okay and then what what makes you happy and what what are those things uh-huh um yeah so for me um i like to um do yoga and exercise and okay. and i feel like if if i take some time in the morning before i start going into my routine with work for the day maybe you know small as a half hour um then i feel like okay i did something for myself and then if i do something like yoga or exercise then mm-hmm. it puts me in a a better kind of mindset to take on whatever like challenges oh, happen great. throughout the day great so actually yeah. actually you you speaking my language you know as a resilient coach i say i work on a quad so that is 
you know, uh, physical resilience, mental resilience, spiritual resilience. And yes, I have added one more question to that, that is financial resilience. So you, you actually are doing three things right, you know, probably early in the morning before you start your day. So all uh, my listeners and viewers do remember, start your day with maybe some exercises, a little bit of yoga, some meditation to, you know, get hold and get those energies going to face the, as Mary, Mary puts it, to, uh, the challenges of the day. So, yes, uh, now another, you know, you talk, you said uh, before you start your day. So that's a interesting profile there, you know, when I was reading, I said uh, a mix of retail, hospital and insurance. So mm -hmm. tell us something about your experience in this industry. Yeah, um, after I graduated from college, I went right into working, we call it community pharmacy or re retail okay. pharmacy. Uh -huh. And that was pretty, pretty busy. Sometimes you do the 12 hour shifts, you know, without okay. a break. And it's kind of almost like a, you know, like a, a factory, it feels like just putting out the medications. And so I got to a point where I decided I wanted to do um, something else. But while doing that, I, I did find if I, you know, I got up and I went for a run or I did something in the morning, I was, I was able to kind of mm -hmm. handle the day better. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, I got to a point where I decided that I wanted to change my path. And I knew I had to be the one to take action because no one else was going to do it for me. So okay. I started looking into some other options in the pharmacy field. Okay. And I came across a, a job in a, in a hospital and, and I switched to, to that. And every job has its you know, pros and cons. And, and um, so I tried to kind of get the, you know, withdraw the, the, the learning experiences out of it. And, and I did that. And I ended up moving to where I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. And then I found another job for an insurance company, mm -hmm. so which is very different too. But I feel like each each place has helped me to develop my career and mm -hmm. learn pharmacy a little bit from a different perspective. Okay. So, so uh, if I'm hearing it correct, uh, you know, you decided to kind of change jobs uh, or, uh, you know, there was something. So was, was there a challenge or uh, some kind of uh, difficult situation or a tough decision that you had to arrive at, at if I'm trying to read between the lines and would you want to share that with us? Yeah, I, I think um, part of it was I wanted to start practicing pharmacy from a okay. little bit different perspective, mm -hmm. kind of where I was working at the busy retail store. I was pretty much just checking the prescription, handing out the medications, didn't have okay. much time to talk with any, any patients. Mm -hmm. So then I was able to move more into a different setting and do more consulting with the positions and kind of play a different kind of a role. So okay. that was, that was, yeah, one reason I wanted to, to do that. And, and also just the, the pace of it, I wanted to, you know, to kind of change that up a little bit too. Okay. So, yeah. It, and, and also um, after I graduated, I've started doing more research like mm -hmm. on my own into some like alternative medicine and, mm -hmm. Um, so because I became more interested in that, I wanted to kind of step away from, you mm -hmm. know, one role and start moving into another one a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that sounds interesting. So, mm -hmm. and, and now uh, from there to podcasting. So what, yes. what, <laughs> what brings you here? How did you think of, you know, uh, getting into podcasting? Yeah, so the yeah the podcast I'm doing uh, it's called Mindful Empowerment. Oh, um, so I I think that people can empower themselves by learning more information on alternate healthcare, and at least in my experience here in in the states, I found um, a lot of people are only mostly familiar with conventional medicine, mm -hmm. and they're not really aware that sometimes there could be options that might be appropriate. So I'm. I'm interviewing people um, on who are more into the holistic approach, and to I, th I think everybody should have a chance to know you know other information, be able to make the best choice for their health for themselves. So that's that's what I wanted to do podcasting. Oh, excellent, excellent. So so you're looking at you know the kind of holistic empowerment and 
that too mindfully. So I mean, lovely, lovely uh, to disseminate your ideas and what better way of uh, you know empowering people through this medium of uh, the recent times, which is internet, you know, over, uh, crossing the borders and everywhere. So I, I'm very sure that uh, whatever you're doing would certainly yield the desired results. So uh, now, yes, I come to you know the crux of the matter. Uh, what do you think of the present times? Oh, that's a big question there, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I guess as far as, I mean, just the whole, the global situation and mm -hmm. um, I guess, for example, I have a, a, co a co-worker who used to work in the office and now she, she works at home and okay. she's told she doesn't have to go back into the office until there's either mm -hmm. a vaccine or a cure, mm -hmm. which I find a very interesting statement. Mm -hmm. um, See, so yeah, I'm not sure quite where to go with your question, a lot of different um, different changes, uh, going out to the store and having to wear a, a mask, but it actually decreases your oxygen Okay. <laughs> and you know, no proof that it's going to prevent, um, the transmission, of, mm -hmm. of the virus or so, yeah, I'm not sure if you wanted to go into all that or, but definitely some interesting, interesting times right now when more people are mm -hmm. at home, I think, and. Uh, well, of course, and then they're listening maybe to more information online and, you know, podcasting and such. And right. I think wanting to hear more perspectives and starting to think, okay, what is all this going on? It doesn't really make sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so uh, and when we're talking of times, how do you relate the present times to the, you know, politics, the whole, uh, whole uh, politics around the present times and the other issues? It could be environment. It could be the interesting ones, you know, coming to US very soon. I'm talking of elections also. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, here, yeah, in the, in the States, there's okay. a lot of yeah, speculation and what's gonna happen with, with uh -huh. all that, right? So there's right, the politics and then environment and health and a lot of, a lot of you know, key things, I think, going on. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, what, what little I read up and try to follow the news, you know, uh, the environment is challenging and the kind of system that you have, yes, uh, you know, there's a fair bit of uh, autonomy to the states that is there. And so uh, do you think this present times coupled with the politics uh, and the work environment around, does it cause any challenges, any stresses? Are there some elements of negativity uh, which may be in the environment or maybe in the workplace? Yeah, I think as far as a lot of people who now are working at home, they weren't before and mm -hmm. trying to navigate that and still feel like they're connecting with their friends and their coworkers even though it's it's just you know on the computer over the phone, I think that's a challenge for people and figuring out how to still maintain and be being social and interacting with mm -hmm. other people and and not letting it kind of you know bring them down. Yeah. All right, and uh, so is, is there any element of uh, insecurity, some kind of fears, anything that is you know prevailing in the environment there? I think definitely, yeah. You're talking with you know friends or coworkers. I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who um, have become afraid, and which, which is under, understandable. Um, mm -hmm. Especially you know, depending on what information people are aware of, it could definitely be pretty, pretty scary. I guess. I guess I found because of the information that I don't. I'm not afraid, and I'm not worried about it. And I think almost the more you know, the more you people know then the less scary it is all right okay so uh, i mean you think if uh, there is you know some way by which information could be disseminated which is more transparent uh, it would better the environment there yeah i think for example the the podcasting mm -hmm. and 
other other places where the information mm -hmm. isn't censored as much mm -hmm. and i think that's that's a good way to to help get out information that's and then pe people can i think it's information is always going to be somewhat biased right even if people don't mean to but everybody uh -huh. has has what they know but if it's on a platform that's not intentionally being censored then okay then for sure i think that's a good way to great. go great yeah. so so we we would also look forward to you know hearing uh, uh, some some more transparent uh, dissemination of information which can certainly mm -hmm. lift the spirits in the environment so mm -hmm. uh, with all that happening just tell us how's uh, how's a typical day like yeah for me i was working at home before this started so okay. my 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 life hasn't changed all that much i'm still uh -huh. working at home okay um, it it's more just if you go out go out to a store per uh -huh. personally yeah okay. as far as what i found and uh, and uh, what do you think you know uh, in these times like although you have suggested what you do you know to keep your spirits up and uh, to take on the challenges of the day whatever it has to offer um, but uh, what do you think uh, people could do to cope up with the challenges which are around them if there is a negativity you know which is prevailing due to the environment due to the workspace and uh, maybe that kind of politics which is happening at workplace you know all those aspects of uh, maybe competitiveness the envy you know the insecurity creeping in so uh, w what do you suggest uh, one can do to cope up you know on the whole holistically like you put it mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I think a few things. Um, one is having a good morning routine. I guess having a routine in general can be great, especially great. for people who aren't used to working at home. Uh -huh. And then specifically having a, a morning routine, trying to get up at the same time uh -huh. every day. Okay. And I think either some kind of a meditation or, or exercise. Mm -hmm. And um, also a gratitude practice, even just a short minute thinking about you know, something you're thankful for can... I think that can change the mindset that you have almost throughout the day and having that focus. Um, or I know on podcasts, there's a lot of um, mind, mindfulness or positive um, things that you mm -hmm. can listen to and some short ones, even if you only have a few minutes. Um, uh -huh. And, and also for me with, with yoga, I find not only do I get the exercise, okay. but then it helps with my mindset too. And, almost as I go through the day to be more aware of, of my thoughts. And, and, and I think too, like, I mean, get into a little tangent, but noticing how like mm -hmm. your, your thoughts that you have are going to affect how you feel. And then depending how you feel, it's going to affect what kind of actions you're going to take. Um, so I guess in, in general, having the routine and then so I think definitely some kind of meditation, mm -hmm. or if you're not into that, just having a quiet time of, maybe some deep breathing, something like that, I think can really help to lift the, the spirits and, and, and feel more positive and um, connected to other people. Great. So now, now we know the reason behind that glow, you know, on your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, uh, yes, uh, I mean, I do practice uh, yoga and whatever that you say. Uh, and uh, I do find it, it works, certainly. So people, all those who, who are listening and, you know, if you're bogged down with the negativity at workplace, general negativity around in the environment, politics, et cetera, et cetera. So do find some time to get into some kind of routine. So that is what uh, Mary is suggesting. Uh, well, uh, now uh, I know by and far, you know, things are, uh, I mean, reasonably good for our generations and people around us. Uh, but uh, did you have had to face any tough situations, any challenges or like, you know, where you had to push yourself, you know, to achieve something or really, you know, work very hard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think getting my degree okay. definitely had to uh -huh. push myself and uh -huh. it would a lot of other people who just want to, you know, go to parties or uh -huh. hang out. But I went to my classes, I went to the gym, and then I went and studied in the library. <laughs> so I had the end goal in mind, and 
I knew the steps to, I needed to achieve it. And I just kind of kept going one at a time. And, and then I, and then I made it, but definitely some moments in there was challenging and I had to keep. Okay. Keep continuing. On. So uh, one, one thing at a time and, you know, just mm -hmm. follow, follow certain routine. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. While, while everything, you know, everything looks, you know, all good and uh, certainly, you know, going for you. Uh, do you sometimes have, you know, those gremlins or demons going in the head? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I think everybody everybody does. Even okay. if, if their life seems seems great, there's always uh -huh. always something that is easy uh -huh. to you know, feel sad about or bring you down or get annoyed. And uh -huh. I think for me, trying to kind of be more aware of my thoughts and, and noticing noticing mm -hmm. it, or if all of a sudden I start feeling bad, then then my mind goes to okay, well, what what was I just thinking about? Why? Why am I feeling like this and trying mm -hmm. to th think about it and process it rather than just stay in it? Um, yeah, so, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. To another another thing I was going to say um, was the phrase once said to me of "be kind to yourself." All right. And so I'm going through my work day, and it's easy to just keep you know sitting in my chair at my computer all day and. I maybe I need to make sure take mm -hmm. five minutes and get up and stretch or mm -hmm. go outside or it's easy to to put yourself last but if you're I feel like if you be kind to yourself kind of giving yourself even a few minutes here and there throughout the day uh -huh. um, I'll end up at the end of the day feeling a lot better if is than if I just stayed at my computer all day and you know didn't do anything for me so. Great, great. That kind of thing helps too. So that, this is that very, very simple lesson that you just gave us, you know, and uh, that is being kind to yourself. You know, when you're looking into your past and trying to think things and, you know, those uh, demons are going in your head. So uh, guys, take a break and, you know, think of, uh, you know, being kind to yourself. That's lovely. So although uh, what I'm reading here is uh, that this is one aspect uh, among others, which, you know, uh, kinds of, uh, you know, has um, probably brought brought you to that level where you are now. And so uh, still in life, uh, you know, growing up or now, uh, any idols that you have, somebody who idolize, who you idolize, or somebody who has an impact on your life that has really, you know, changed things for you. Mm. I think growing up, um, I mean, definitely my, my parents were, Okay. Uh, my, my dad always worked really hard. And I think I, I, I felt like I wanted to, mm -hmm. to you know, do my best partly maybe because the mm -hmm. way I, I was raised and the role models that mm -hmm. they were. And, um, I'd say recently I've uh, made a connection with a, a pharmacist. She was on my, my show, interviewed her. Mm -hmm. um, Rosemary Pierce and okay. definitely she is a role model for me and right. is to how she's taken the kind of career of pharmacy and expanded it past just maybe the limited box where we're graduated and we're told hey, this is this is what it's going to be but she mm -hmm. kind of invented other ways to do it so to okay. me that's very inspiring and I think you could apply that to certainly other things a lot of other things besides pharmacy would you know whatever your your job is i think there's mm -hmm. ways that you can think how can i improve it how can i change it and then that can make it more exciting too and maybe less mundane to to you know ex expand it and better it from there all right that, that's very nice you know and uh, so so while you have a role model who uh, certainly gives you certain goals to you know or maybe some dreams to follow uh is Mary, you know, going ahead with some purpose now? I mean, what is your purpose in life? Do you have a vision or a mission? I know you are into empowering people. So is there a specific purpose behind it? it it's interesting. Um, sometimes I think, well, how do you know what your purpose is, right? <laughs> Did you just somebody tell you? Or you, I, I'm being kind of funny now, but... <laughs> Mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess more more seriously, I do feel like um, my purpose is to kind of to seek 
whether you call it truth or information or what's really going on mm -hmm. and to try to share that with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do feel that is definitely a purpose I right. have. Yeah. But there, you, you made a very interesting point there. Uh, how does one know whether there is a purpose or not? <laughs> so, I mean, uh, would you like to shed a little more light there? That was a little interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I've heard a lot of speakers talk about your purpose and uh -huh. finding your purpose and what is your purpose. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes I hear that and I think, okay, well, how do I know? Maybe somebody might think it's this, but what is it? Uh -huh. um, and then what I, and then what I sh shared in mine, I guess that that was just a feeling or a thought or something I'm passionate about, I guess. So to me, that fits in is what, oh. it, what do I think at least a purpose is in my life, if not the overall purpose. True, true. And yes, mm -hmm. uh, it, it can happen if you, I mean, there has to be something which is, you know, keeping you going and uh, it may be a passion. It may be as people put it, a larger purpose or maybe a mission or just simply a goal, which, you know, and, and the, as you keep moving in life, uh, de depending on your priorities, it can change also. So uh, what mm -hmm. you say is absolutely right. And it gives me a point to ponder, you know, uh, that uh, they can, I mean, how do you get to your purpose? That's, uh, that's really, uh, you know, a new perspective that I have got. That uh, how do you how do you find your purpose? And you say there has to be a purpose. What is it? So uh, on that note, yes, it was lovely to have you on. Uh, you know, know your happiness how with Vinko Chow, and uh, thank you for sparing your time. And uh, I do acknowledge uh, all that work that you're doing. Although you say that uh, you still haven't found a purpose. It's a feeling or a thought or a passion that you're following at the moment. But I'm sure that when you think about it or maybe going forward in times, you would realize some serious or larger purpose there, which is hidden. So, and uh, as such, your routine and your lifestyle is such that uh, where, uh, which is taking you towards, you know, the bigger path of what we all probably are looking at today to connect with the you know, larger soul or spirituality as some term it. So uh, thank you. Thank you again for uh, coming on our show and uh, making it interesting. It uh, giving us another perspective of, uh, you know, what Dr. Mary Elizabeth is. Otherwise, yes, uh, we know that, you know, and by, uh, believe me, uh, believe me, you've, you've come out very, very charming and smiling. You know, you never, no, it didn't, uh, you didn't look like, you know, very close guarded person here, not at all. So, so yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls who are listening to us, uh, that was Dr. Mary Elizabeth all the way from Jacksonville, Florida, USA, you know, speaking uh, her mind on various aspects of challenges or maybe so-called so negativity around for various reasons. So that's about it. Uh, hope you like this conversation and uh, we shall be back with you with another interesting conversation with another interesting guest. And till then, take all the due precautions I keep saying stay fit eat healthy and like mary said do some exercises do some yoga and keep peaceful stay happy it is me uh wing commander satyendra chauhan aka Vinko chow from bangalore and dr mary elizabeth from jacksonville u.s signing off saying bye-bye take care see ya